Hello, welcome back once again. I hope now you understood how uh, the storage, uh, how the unit of storage um, uh, is measured, and you understood uh, the file folders, directories, as well as the uh, uh, the size national system of numbering. We have um, the numbering system that makes it easy for human being to understand the units of measurement for example instead of saying um 1024 byte to represent kilobyte uh, the international system of numbering came up with um, the numbering system that is very easy and simple for us to remember that is 1000 like for example uh, we could have like 100, 1,000, 10, 100,000, 1 million. It keeps on going on as the multiple of 10. So now we have 1,000. And this is very easy for human to understand. That's why in most of the papers out there, you find that people are presenting kilobytes by 1,000 bytes. Although that is not exact, but at least it gives an idea. A kilobyte is equivalent to 1024 byte. And the scientific notation for 1000 is 1 times 10 raised to the power of 3, whereby 3 is the number of zeros. Now, think of that 1000 as another base 1000, because that is the basis of our, our number. So each time, if you want to get the next level of storage, you have to multiply 1,000 by itself, which will give us 1,000 square. And that is equivalent to one megabyte, which is equivalent to 1,024 kilobytes. And the scientific notation for that, as we have seen, is one times 10 raised to the power of six. That six is the number of zero. And if you have six zeros, that means we have one million of characters. For example, you can use this to play music in one minute. A song of one minute is equivalent to one million of characters. So you may ask yourself, like, ah, how do you get the power of six? The power of six is the, the power of six is the number of zero that you get by multiplying one thousand times one thousand. So 1,000 times 1,000, you get six zeros, which is equivalent to 1 million of characters. And also, when you multiply the base 1,000 times 1,000 square, you get 1,000 Q, which is equivalent to uh, 1 gigabyte, according to the international system of numbering, for human to understand. But... If you were to look at it critically, then that is a fallacy because the actual gigabyte is actually 1,024 megabyte, which is equivalent to uh, 1 billion of characters. For example, if you truncate it using the, as, uh, the IS number, numbering system. So the scientific notation for that is 1 times 10 raised to the power of 9 whereby nine is the number of zeros in a billion. So a billion character could be equivalent to one minute, one minute of the DVD video, for example. And also we looked at uh, terabyte as being uh, 1,000 raised to the power of four. That means you have to multiply 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, four times, and that will give us uh, one, ta one times 10 raised to the power of 12 as a scientific notation and that will be equivalent to one terabyte and one terabyte in binary system is equivalent to 1024 gigabyte and that will represent or it means that we have one trillion of characters one trillion of character characters you know can be equivalent to um a, a, a hard, you know, the, 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 the data storage like hard drive. We have a trillion hard drive right now. And also, 
if you multiply that um, 1,000 raised to the power of 4 times the base, which is 1,000, you get 1,000 raised to the power of 5. And then when you multiply 1,000 five times, that's when you get uh, the scientific notation, which is equivalent to 1 times 10 raised to the power of 15, whereby 15 is the number of zeros in a petabyte. This is just to make it easy for human to understand. But in the binary system, a petabyte is equivalent to 1,024 times terabyte. And, uh, and, and that means uh, in a terabyte, we have one quadrillion of characters, which is equivalent to the basic search engine data storage. You know, we have like cloud computing nowadays where people are now storing data in the internet. We have like Google search engine and others search engine out there like Yahoo and, and, and the like. All the search engines must have a large storage space and that storage space can be measured in petabyte, which is one quadrillion of characters of data. And then uh, when you multiply that uh, 10 raised, uh, 1,000 raised to the power of 5 times the base, which is 1,000, you get 1,000 raised to the power of 6. And 1,000 raised to the power of 6 means that you need to multiply 1,000 six times by itself. So 1,000 times 1,000 times 1,000 times 1,000 times 1,000 times 1,000 gives you uh, 1 times 10 raised to the power of 18, whereby 18 will be the number of zeros in exabyte. So what does it mean? So one exabyte is equivalent to one quintillion of characters, which is, for example, maybe equivalent to a yearly global data transfer over the internet. So in a year, the data transfer over the internet may be equivalent to one quillion of quintillion of characters, you know, as opposed to quadrillion of characters, which is used for the search engine. Now, that is not enough. I know we may not have any hard drive now, but the current file system called uh, the new technology file system, which is uh, produced, which is made by uh, Microsoft, it contains up to one zettabyte of data. And one zettabyte of data is equivalent to uh, one sextillion of characters. You know, sextillion, <laughs> this is where technology becomes sexy, you know. So NTF file system uh, can be used now for a global data production. And according to some research, uh, 33 zettabyte of data were used per year. Now, when we look back and try to predict or forecast the future in the next 10 years how many zettabyte of data do you think we will need to keep up with the pace of data production huge one and we don't have the we don't have the capability to have the storage uh, space that will hold that kind of data that my friend is the reason why currently researches are being done to come up with a new storage facility that can be able to store large volume of data at a cheaper cost, which is not feasible because, you know, we need a lot of electricity, we need a lot of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, you know, a lot of things to come up with such kind of uh, storage volume, a lot of time, you know, to process that data and time also depends on the space. If the space is not there, how is, is it that the time is going to help us there? So time and space go together. So 10, 1,000 raised to the power of 7 times 1,000 uh, will give us yet another uh, level of storage, which is called Yotabyte. Yotabyte is 1 times 10 raised to the power of 24, 
whereby 24 will be the number of zeros in your byte. You know, that's the scientific notation. In the previous one, we have zeta byte, which is equivalent to 1 times 10 raised to the power of 20, 21 scientifically. So um, to get that 21 zero, you have to multiply that 1000 raised to the power of 7 by itself seven times like 1000 times 1000 times 1000 times 1000 times 1000 times 1000 times 1000 that is how you get 21 zero and then the same thing applies to the rest you know like uh, for the yotta byte we have 10 raised to the 1000 raised to the power of eight so you need to multiply 1000 by itself eight times that will give you one times 10 raised to the power of 24 scientifically that is how to represent it and one yotta byte is equivalent to one septillion of characters which may be equivalent to the entire size of the internet in the world <laughs> think of the entire global internet as being one septillion of data characters and then when you go further, you will come to realize that we also have what is known as Brontobite. Brontobite is equivalent to 1000 raised to the power of 9, which means to get the number of zeros from there, you need to multiply 1000 by itself 9 times, and that will give us 1 times 10 raised to the power of 27. And that 27 is the number of zeros that we need in one Brontobite. One brontobyte can contain one octillion of data, octillion of characters. For example, one brontobyte is equivalent to one million of zettabyte of data. And this space cannot be used anyhow. Really. They are now using it for research purposes or for exploring the space, for going to the moon and exploring some other planets out there. And the normal PC or normal computer that we use cannot uh, afford <laughs> to have this kind of space. And then, apart from that, we have what is called the geobyte. Geobyte, this is the giant one, which is equivalent to uh, 1000 raised to the power of 10 according to the international uh, system of number. So that means to get the scientific notation of this, you need to multiply that 1000 raised to the power of 10 by itself 10 times in order to get 1 times 10 raised to the power of 30. And that 30 is the number of zeros that we have in the geobyte. So one geobyte means that we have one nonillion of characters. <laughs> one no million of characters you know do we have any file folders directories of that space of that size no this has been left now for future generations purposes for example to explore uh, big data for artificial intelligence system to become adaptive you know so there's no any space of this nature you know in the current uh, basic pc that we use so in order to achieve the larger spaces that we have seen it may require you know us to do what is called uh, clustering you know putting all uh, the big sizes for example putting the zettabytes or exabytes combining them together until we achieve uh, the size that may meet the specific requirements of our data. So my friend, this is how to measure the unit of storage and the speed and uh, how to understand uh, the, you know, the prefaces and the system of measurement by using international system of numbering or using the binary representation of bits and then the scientific notation for each of them as indicated in green here. Whatever is inside the bracket is the meaning of what it is. 
that we're looking for outside the bracket. For example, this column here for IS is the representation of the international system of numbering. And then the binary system is what is in the middle here. And the scientific notation is written in green plus the meaning inside the bracket. So that is it, my friend. This is the end for uh, the measurement of the unit of storage in byte and the speed in bits per second. The speed of the processor is measured in bits per second or the speeds of memory. You need to measure the speed in bits per second. And the speed of the processor is, is measured in terms of the frequency of data that you know can be fetched from the memory and that frequency is called the hertz so the the amount of times that the processor fetches data from the memory is measured in hertz for example if you have like 2.5 um, let's say 2.5 megahertz or gigahertz of processor per se that means that processor fetches 2.5 billion of characters from the memory in one second and it has to process them bit by bit until when it finishes everything so the processor speed is measured in in terms of hertz, in terms of frequency of the data that it fetches from the memory. So that is it. I hope this video has been informative and I thank you for viewing. I'll see you in the next video.